Welcome back to OMG The Cloud. This is the PFSense Virtual Firewall Series, and today we're talking VLANs. In our previous episodes, we did a brief overview, we did the installation, and now we're going to touch on VLANs. VLANs are a great way to segment your network, to control traffic and isolate traffic in ways that normally would require a bunch of separate switching hardware and things like that. This is sort of modern network segregation. Um, it's been around for quite some time, um, but it's also something that maybe a lot of folks in IT might not encounter until they have been in the enterprise IT world for a while uh, or are doing pure network stuff day to day. And uh, if that's not you, that's fine, but this is, the, this is the introductory for everybody else. In a lab environment, you might not have a switch at home that is capable of VLAN tagging, so you'll want to make sure that your switch is capable um, and if it's not, there's still things we can do in the lab to still work with VLANs without the underlying switch hardware. This is going to come into play if you have multiple hosts in your environment and you have multiple VLANs that you need to segment and you need those segments to be able to talk across the hosts. The underlying switching hardware is going to need to be able to pass those VLAN tags. If you have a single host or you don't have that switching hardware and you can constrain yourself to a single host, the VMware hypervisor and its switching stack, its network stack, is perfectly capable of handling all of the VLAN, uh, VLAN tagging on its own. So you could still do this in a single host environment, regardless of any switching hardware. The limitation being you wouldn't be able to get those VLANs outside of that environment. So enough talking, let's dig in. So let's start with the VMware side. I'm gonna take a host that I haven't yet configured for these VLAN tags, and we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go ahead and just add networking. We're gonna add a virtual port. Click next, you're gonna attach that to your switch that uh, is, is underlying the hardware there. Next. And we're going to name it. So I'm going to call this one OMG LAN. I'm going to give this VLAN tag 600. And with those three in place, you can see I do have a couple of other VLANs already defined, but 600, 601, and 602 are the three that we're going to be working with. I do happen to have three hosts in my environment. I do have these same virtual networks defined uh, identically on the other hosts as well. And my underlying switching hardware is passing the VLAN tags. Okay, so that's the three VLANs that we're actually going to have virtual machines talking on, but we're gonna go ahead and need to add one more. We need a trunk port. So I'm just gonna call this virtual network, I'm gonna call it trunk, and its VLAN ID is gonna be all 4095. This is gonna be the network we attach PFSense to so that it can talk to all of those VLANs simultaneously. And with those in place, let's go ahead and pop back over to PFSense on the virtual machine layer. I'm gonna go ahead and edit the VM, and I'm gonna change this network adapter, which is currently our LAN, not, not our WAN LAN, if you remember from before, <laughs> since this is a lab, but our actual inside network in the virtualized PFSense. We're gonna change this to our trunk port. There we go. And with that in place, we can go back into PFSense and we can start defining our VLANs. So the first thing we need to do, reconfigure that LAN side. It's attached directly to this interface. We're actually gonna delete that. Okay, what we're gonna do in its place is we're gonna define those three VLANs. So we're going to the VLAN tab and we're gonna define those same three VLANs. And the important part here is to go ahead and attach it to this second interface here. It defaults, always defaults to the first one, which is usually your, your WAN interface inside PFSense. Make sure you're attaching to the right one. This needs to be, in most cases, gonna be EM1 or it's gonna be that second interface that's not attached to anything at this point. Give it those three VLAN tags, so 600, OMG LAN, and they add the remaining two. So now we have our three VLAN interfaces, and now we need to build PFSense interfaces based on those. So back over to the Interface Assignments tab, and we're gonna drop down and select our first one, VLAN 600, add 601, 602. You can see it gives us some default names here, this opt1, opt2, go ahead and rename those to something sensible like servers, DMZ. Okay, so once you've gone through and renamed those, what we need to do is configure each of these. So they're gonna be in a disabled state. Let's start with LAN. We're gonna go ahead and enable that interface, a static IP4. We wanna put that network address space in. So 192.168.10.1 will be the IP of that interface. 
And generally, we're working with a slash 24 network. Save and apply, and then go ahead and rinse and repeat for the remaining ones. Okay, with those interfaces built out, uh, back here on the main page is probably the best place to see or what I define those IPs as. Additionally, you're gonna to wanna to set up DHCP. So let's head over, head over to DHCP server and go ahead and build out a sensible DHCP scope for each of the three interfaces. They are independent and they are disabled by default. So go ahead and enable it and you need to give it a range within that network space. So 192, 168, 10.100 through 192, 168.10.150. That's what I'm gonna choose. Go to the bottom, save, and then you'll set this for the other interfaces as well with a range in that address space. With that in place, we're ready to go ahead and do a couple firewall rules so that these interfaces can talk to one another. So go to firewall, go to rules, go to LAN, and let's go ahead and make a new rule in the LAN space here. We're gonna let, this is kind of typical, we're gonna let the LAN, the internal network, talk to all interfaces. So it's allowed to get to the server's network, it's allowed to get to the DMZ network, it's allowed to get outbound to the internet. So this rule is going to be pretty wide open. So we're gonna set this to any, source and destination will be any. So this is going to be LAN to all. Now in the server's network, let's go ahead and make a slightly different rule. We're gonna do protocol any, source any, so anything inside this interface. Destination, go ahead and hit LAN net and hit invert match. When you look at this on the line, it makes a little more sense. So what this is doing is saying anything on this interface can go anywhere except for the LAN network. So this will let the server's network get to the DMZ and get out to the internet, but it cannot get back to the LAN. Okay, let's go to the DMZ, make a rule. So we're gonna do this one a little differently too. Action block, we're gonna say protocol any, and we're gonna define the LAN network. Let's go ahead and add one more, another block destination, server's network. So this is gonna block it from going to the server's network. It's gonna block it from going to the LAN. Let's go ahead and add one more, and this will be a pass rule, default, protocol any, any, any. So we're doing a block to here. If it matches this rule, it's rejected. We're doing a block to the LAN. If it matches this, it's rejected. And finally, if it didn't match any of these and didn't get blocked, it's going to be allowed out. The only other route, which is gonna be outbound to the internet. As we build upon this, we'll wanna be conscious of this because if we add another network and we don't define a block for it, the DMZ will have access to it. So this is just one way you can handle it. This is, there's a few different ways you can, you can do this, but this is one way to do it. So now it's time to test. We're gonna go ahead and break this video here and continue on in the next one where we will set up just a couple of VMs, put them on those different VLANs, and just show the communication across the different networks where they can talk, where they can't talk, and just proof this out, show that it works, and I think that'll be a good place to pick up next time. Thanks for watching.